In this video, we'll learn some basic properties of array data types in P5.js, as well as how to save and retrieve data from an array. So what is an array? Well, it's a special data type that allows one variable to store a list of values. And arrays, just like single value variables, can hold numbers, strings of texts, other arrays, or even objects. So I've got an example here in my P5 web editor, and I'm working towards making some interactive poetry. At the very top of my code, I have a variable called names, and that's holding one string, so just one word. And back down in my draw loop, I'm using these first two lines to draw the black text. And below that, I have another call to the text function. And this time, rather than plugging in a static string, I'm plugging in the variable that's holding that string, which right now happens to be snake. Now, of course, I can come and change that text, maybe something like this, and I can see how that updates on my canvas. So I'm gonna Command Z or Control Z to undo that text change. And what I'd like to do, uh, rather than have that variable store just one string, I'd like it to store multiple strings so I get a wider choice of words, and then I can set up some interaction to swap those words out and make different phrases for my interactive poetry. Uh, so we're focusing on this first line here in the code, and we'll look at that as an example of one way to declare and initialize an array variable in P5. So we've already got part of this setup. We're saying let names equal. So that's our declaration of the variable. Now, uh, because we are going to be saving multiple pieces of information into this one variable, what we're gonna do is uh, start with some rectangular brackets. So just after that equal sign, I'm gonna start my left-hand bracket and all the way at the end of the line, I'll do my right-hand bracket and then my semicolon to close out that line. So the brackets, transform that variable into an array. So this is an array with just one value in it now. And most times we want an array to hold multiple pieces of information. So I'm just gonna paste in a list of additional strings of text here. And I need to make sure that I'm formatting the information correctly. So in this case, I'm working with strings. I need to make sure that every piece of text is enclosed in double quotes and that each individual word is separated by a comma. So you can see I have seven different words and uh, P5 is displaying every single one of those words. And I can see here in my draw loop, I'm calling that entire array. So now that I've set up my array with multiple values, that names variable refers to the entire array. In this instance though, I wanna be able to pull out individual words from that array so that my sketch makes more sense. And a feature of arrays that helps us to do that uh, is called the index. So that's essentially a numbering system where each value in the array has a numerical index that lets us point to it and pull out that specific value. So array indexes always start at zero. So this first word will be index zero. The second one will be index one, two, three, four, and so on. And we can specify the index number again with our right and left rectangular brackets. So to access one value from an array, we'll start with the name, the open and close rectangular brackets, and then we'll insert the index number that we'd like to pull out. So let's just start with index two. So now you can see I'm pulling out the string with an index of two, and that checks out because if I go back to the array, I have index zero, one, two. And of course I can pull out any of these just by deleting and retyping a different index call in that draw loop. Now it's possible to type in an index number that doesn't actually exist. So let's try a higher one like nine. And in that case, I'm gonna get an error so I can see down in my console. Well, I'm getting lots of errors because I'm still running here. But uh, the point is we need to make sure that we are calling index numbers that actually exist. So how do we make sure that we don't accidentally call an index value that's out of range for our array? Well, let's jump ahead to the finished version of this sketch, and this is linked in the demo files for this week. It's exactly the same as what we've set up so far, uh, with one exception down here at the bottom, and this is on the function touch ended event. So this lets us touch the screen and cycle through each of the words in our array. So you can see here as I click, I'm able to pull different elements out of that array that we started with. And I'm doing so by setting up a variable to hold 
the index that we're wanting to call. So it's starting at zero. And every time we touch, we're taking that index variable and bumping it up by one. So that's why we are able to cycle through each element in the array. Uh, we've also got a conditional here that's testing uh, for the value of that index variable against the length of the array. And so this is the key piece of information is that once we set up an array, we're able to pull out the length of the array from that array variable name. So we can say names.length that will give us the number of elements that we have in our array. And that's how we make sure that we don't accidentally call for an element that's outside the range of the array. Okay, so that's just a little bit of basic information about setting up and using arrays in P5.js. We'll definitely touch on this again in other videos for more advanced examples of what to do with arrays.